Welcome to Blade of Tech Musings, your channel for retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. Only three months after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, OneWeb looks to exit the proceedings with new ownership led by the UK government and Indian telecom giant Bharti in a $1 billion bid that topped all other offers. U.S. Bankruptcy Court in White Plains, New York still needs to approve the bid. After eight years of fanfare, several high-profile investors, three launches, the involvement of three of the largest space contractors in the world, and $3.3 billion of capital, the outcome of OneWeb's bankruptcy is a particularly bitter pill for the investor with the largest stake in OneWeb, SoftBank Group. OneWeb's filing for court protection from its creditors is a first for a company with an investment from the high-flying Japanese venture capital firm and conglomerate. The bankruptcy filing came only one week after its third successful launch of satellites. The filing cited high costs and stiff competition leading to a cash crunch, listing liabilities and assets of more than $1 billion each in its Chapter 11 petition. That makes the UK-India bid for the company essentially equivalent to its book value and wipes out the investment of the initial investors, which included Airbus and Qualcomm Inc., in addition to SoftBank. The satellite operator hoped the $300 million in approved debtor-in-possession financing would allow it to continue operations, but the company has been in mothballs and most of its employees laid off during the bankruptcy process. OneWeb now hopes that with approval of the top bid, they were able to rehire much of its workforce. Similarly, the company's creditors, such as Ariana Space, hope to stave off potential losses amounting in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's take a look at why the UK government and Barty committed to buying OneWeb, who else was interested, and what it means for the competition such as Starlink and SCS. Signaling OneWeb's confidence that the UK-Indian bid would win court approval, the company acknowledged that the partnership demonstrates the UK's ambition to be a pioneer in the research, development, manufacturing, and exploitation of novel satellite technologies through the ownership of a fleet of low-Earth orbit satellites. Barty, for its part, is less interested in OneWeb's technology and is more interested in the increase in market share the company's constellation will offer. Barty is expected to actually run the company's operations and provide it commercial direction. Boris Johnson's administration also hopes to revive the UK's moribund space industry, which is rudderless now that its major project, Europe's Galileo Global Positioning System, is off-limits as a result of Brexit. Galileo is expected to be fully operational by 2026, and the UK sank a substantial sum into its development. The UK had hoped to replace Galileo with a jointly funded system in partnership with Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United States. However, the proposed system's projected costs of $6.2 billion had put a stop to the effort before a feasibility study was released. The OneWeb Low Earth Orbit Constellation is not exactly ideal for GPS operations, as satellites for that purpose are typically in geostationary orbit around 20,000 kilometers from Earth considerably higher than OneWeb's 1,200 kilometers. Broadcast frequencies also differ. Barty owns the third largest mobile provider in the world, Barty Airtel, which has more than 425 million customers. The Indian telecommunications company hopes OneWeb will give it coverage over South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, coverage it currently lacks in its own network. OneWeb has its headquarters in West London and parallel operations in Virginia. The spacecraft are currently made in Florida in partnership with the European aerospace giant Airbus. There has been talk of this production, or at least some of it, being moved to Britain in the future as part of the new arrangements. The biggest news that came out of OneWeb's bankruptcy auction was not the UK government's and Barty Airtel's interest in the company, but interest from at least three other companies controlled by the Chinese government. The U.S. Space Force was asked about the CCP's actions with respect to OneWeb, but the service was non-committal. Lieutenant General David Thompson, Vice Commander of the Space Force, said that the Department of Defense was not just focused on OneWeb, but on all of the commercial space companies that face bankruptcy or are under financial stress. The Space Force wanted to see what they could do in terms of securing the capabilities the U.S. needed for national security and ensure that bad actors didn't have the opportunity to acquire those capabilities. 
Any Chinese purchase of OneWeb would likely need it to be cleared by the US and UK's agencies responsible for sensitive technologies. Media speculation has centered on whether OneWeb's polar satellite coverage was critical to the US's plans to counteract growing Chinese activity in those areas. American and European competitors to OneWeb weren't exactly sitting on their hands while the Chinese looked for a way to gain control of the company. Amazon, SpaceX, and Utilsat all signed non-disclosure agreements to gain access to the bidder's data room at OneWeb and sift through information looking for advantages. Amazon's interest has to do with its plans to create its own broadband constellation known as Project Kuiper. The most attractive assets that OneWeb has to offer would be arguably its rights to radio frequency spectrum and its access to the U.S. market, advantages that Amazon currently lacks. Amazon's plans for Project Kuiper first came to light more than a year ago. The Seattle-based company is seeking the Federal Communication Commission's go-ahead to put 3,300 satellites in low Earth orbit to offer broadband access to billions of people around the world who are currently underserved. SpaceX has the same stated objective and has raised objections to Amazon's request for fast-track consideration of its application at the FCC. OneWeb's assets could have conceivably provided a shortcut to regulatory clearance. SpaceX is already building out its Starlink broadband constellation in low Earth orbit, using satellites that are being built at its facility in Redmond, Washington. It is Starlink that OneWeb cited in its bankruptcy filing as the primary reason, other than the pandemic, for its desperate situation. SpaceX has already launched a significant portion of its Starlink constellation, freezing the satellite broadband internet market while potential customers see if SpaceX will deliver a viable service. There is no indication that the OneWeb network is technologically compatible to Starlink or that its purchase would be beneficial to SpaceX. It seems likely that Elon Musk merely took advantage of the opportunity to gather competitive intel and to possibly thwart Amazon's interest in the company. Eutelsat is a European satellite operator based in Paris, and the French government was said to be working with Eutelsat to assess OneWeb's value. Eutelsat's interest is fascinating given that it has only extremely limited plans for its own low-Earth orbiting constellation. Eutelsat was planning a fleet of small satellites for broadband internet before OneWeb filed for bankruptcy. Acquiring the OneWeb fleet may have been seen as a bargain basement option, although winning an auction would also force Eutelsat to fund the building of the rest of OneWeb's constellation. OneWeb's problems have been good news for the only satellite operator that provides low Earth orbit broadband internet coverage, SES, and in particular its subsidiary, MPower. MPower is the name given to SES owned O3B, which coincidentally was also founded by Greg Weiler, who went on to form OneWeb. SES plans to launch its second generation network, MPower, in 2021. SES is expected to face less competition than expected, given that OneWeb will likely incur substantial delays while the UK government and Barty Airtel digest their acquisition and refocus OneWeb's efforts towards their own objectives. Geostationary orbit satellite constellations run by Iridium, GlobalStar, and Orbcom only offer low-speed data communications and phone coverage. SpaceX's Starlink is about a third of the way through its first phase, first orbital shell of its constellation with about 500 operational satellites. Limited testing of the constellation began in 2019 and significant development is being focused on the receiver that will be deployed by ground-based users. The entire 4,000 satellite first phase is expected to be completed by 2027 with the constellation being commercially operational well before that year, probably by 2024. A much larger second phase constellation of about 7,500 satellites with a significantly lower orbital shell is expected to be fully deployed slightly later than the first phase. The deployment schedule is likely to be heavily influenced by the demand for SpaceX's launch vehicles and launch complex availability. Amazon's Kuiper and its 4,000 satellite first phase constellation faces significant technical hurdles, among them the certification of Blue Origin's rockets for spaceflight. It is Blue Origin that will likely be the Jeff Bezos company that will provide rockets to Project Kuiper. Additionally, none of the Kuiper satellites have been launched into orbit as of this video, nor has the project obtained an FCC license for its network, bringing doubt to Amazon's ambitious service schedule. What do you think about OneWeb's bankruptcy auction, the winners, and the auction's impact on SpaceX Starlink and the rest of the satellite data and internet industry? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this update on OneWeb. 
If so, click that like button. Not a subscriber yet? Clicking the subscribe button, the bell notification icon will help both our YouTube standing and keep you informed when new episodes are released. Links to our previous episodes can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.